All right, now we are joined by Haley Watkins, who's running for city council position, or excuse me, District 5. So go ahead with a two minute introduction. Yeah, so as Jeff said, my name is Haley Watkins. I'm running for Seattle City Council in District 5. I live in Northgate with my husband. And I'm running because I have ded dedicated my career to advocating on issues that I care about, things like reproductive rights and marriage equality, and really helping others to do the same thing. Um, and that's really the <coughs> experience that I want to take with me to City Hall. I'm a community organizer by day, uh, right now for Planned Parenthood Votes Northwest. Um, I'm also a PCO and serve on the 46th uh, Executive Board um, and have for over a year, uh, as well as the King County Civil Rights Commission. Um, and I won't go through my whole resume today, but I'll pull out a couple of other highlights for you as well. Uh, last year, I was named a young green leader by Washington Conservation Voters. I was a regional field director on the marriage equality campaign, and I got my start with the King County Labor Council. And I tell you those things because I believe that they really demonstrate my progressive track record. Um, I believe that we need more young people in office, we need more women in office, and we need more true progressives in office. Um, and that's one of the reasons that I decided to run. Um, I'm sure that you guys will talk to me a lot about issues to me. So I'm going to end there so we can get right to the questions. All right. So uh, feel free to turn over the piece of paper right in front of you. These are our four prepared questions. Feel free to read along as we say them aloud. These are two-minute um, answers. And I think we left off. Uh, John, what are you doing number one? Hi. Welcome. Seattle is experiencing a housing affordability crisis. Several policy responses have been suggested, including linkage fees, incentive zoning, subsidized housing, and rent control, among others. What is your approach for keeping Seattle affordable? Mm -hmm. Or making it affordable? <laughs> <laughs> That's a great question. So I'm a renter myself. Uh, so I know very uh, closely what the struggle is in terms of trying to find a place to live that you can afford to rent. My family and I, we struggled a lot when I was growing up. Um, and over the years, my husband and I have continued to face those same things. So housing affordability to me is not a rhetorical issue. It's an issue that I face every single day um, and my peers and many, many other Seattleites here in the city. Um, I support the linkage piece in terms of affordable housing. Um, however, I don't believe that there is one silver bullet. Housing is an incredibly complex issue and it's going to take a whole wide range of solutions. So linkage fees is one part of that. Um, I also believe that the city should take a look at our bonding capacity in terms of uh, purchasing or building more affordable housing units um, that the city actually owns and runs. Uh, I also uh, support things like the multifamily tax exemption and um, really taking a look at that program to make sure that it's serving those uh, who are on the lower end of the income scale. Uh, so what that program is, is if uh, a developer can opt into uh, setting aside 20% of their units to make them affordable. Uh, and in theory, this is great, uh, but it ha hasn't actually turned out a lot of units for those making 50% and below the area of median income. Um, the city council just took a look at microhousing and adjusted rents down to make sure that those who are more like 40% of the AMI um, are able to uh, rent those units. I think that we need to take a look at the larger units as well to make sure that one and two bedrooms and family size housing are available to those living. Uh, those are just a couple of ideas. Um, of course, we can't tackle the whole thing in two minutes, um, but I'm happy to talk more about it at the time. Great. Um, number two, Joseph. Last year, voters approved the levy to fund a universal preschool pilot program. After the pilot concludes, how would you fund the full implementation of the program, and what policy changes would you make to assure this plan addresses educational disparities in our city? Oh, that's a good question. That's one I haven't been asked yet. So good job, you guys. <laughs> I always love new questions. Um, well, after the pilot concludes, I think we're going to have to make some tough choices about how the uh, project is going to be funded through our existing city budget. Um, you know, there are a number of ways that we can move money around from other projects and make sure that we're prioritizing. Uh, we've seen time and time again that early childhood education is a strong indicator for how well somebody will do later in life, whether that's graduating from high school or have, ending up with a job that pays a living wage. Um, so I am fully committed to making sure that all, see, all children uh, can make it through the pre-K program. Um, 
in terms of policy changes, one other policy change that I would really love to see is making sure that our child care workers are being paid a living wage as well. Um, unfortunately, uh, Prop 1A and Prop 1B were on the ballot at the same time. Um, and I would have loved to vote for both of them because I do think that our child care workers are often um, in really tough working situations or not making enough money for the work that we expect them to do. Uh, so I'd like to take a look at how we can uh, lift up those workers and provide them with the resources that they need to make sure that our children are also getting the education that they need. Great. Michael, number three. Bertha is still stuck. What options does the City of Seattle have with respect to potential cost overruns, the waterfront, transit, and an unsafe viaduct? Yeah, so I think that we need to start looking at Plan B for Bertha. Um, I know that she is, uh, has been up and running and then stuck and then up and running and then stuck. Um, and I think it's time to start looking at what our other options are. Um, I don't have like a nice box to answer for you today mm -hmm. as to what the fix of the tunnel is. Um, unfortunately, I wish it could just be one person comes in with this magical solution to fix our issue. Uh, but I would really like to work with environmentalists and transit organizations, transportation focused organizations, to make sure um, that whatever we're doing down at the waterfront moves people, freight, and goods, and really gets us where we need to go while preserving the beauty of our waterfront. Evan, number four. Seattle is the fastest growing big city in the country. Should we encourage or discourage this growth, and what policy changes are necessary to accommodate the growth? Mm -hmm. uh, so I am, uh, I think it's a great problem to have that we are growing really fast. It means that we are doing something right and that people want to live in Seattle. Um, I get it. I also want to live in Seattle. Uh, so I think that we should encourage folks to move here. The more backgrounds and diversity that we have, the more vibrant and exciting our city becomes. And I really think that as we move towards the future, um, that really discouraging growth isn't a super reasonable thing for us to be doing, um, nor do I think is that particularly effective. Um, we have to make sure that we're building enough units um, in order to house all of the new folks coming into the area. Um, I would like to focus on transit-oriented development. I live in Northgate. We've been in the light rail station in about five years. Um, and that makes Northgate a real obvious place to build some new units. Um, there is a lot of spread in the North Bay and north of that area. Uh, and I think that there are ways that we could be using our space a little bit better. Um, I also think that by building up in the areas around our transit stations and light rail homes is how we protect the things that we love so much about Seattle, the parks and the green spaces, the neighborhoods with single family homes. Uh, we have to put housing somewhere and I think that around uh, our urban villages and our transit stations is the natural place to do that. Good, so now we'll open it up to follow-up questions. Um, these are one minute answers, your name, and then David. Hi, could you talk to me a little bit about what ideas you have for shift away from criminalizing those women um, and really going after demand is probably the number one thing that we can be doing. I also think that we have to have a really strong um, lead and community policing models in our police force uh, to make sure that women who are who are talked to or encounter um, our police officers aren't taken straight to jail, that they are offered different ways of diversion and making sure that they have the resources that they need. Uh, I also think that we need more women's shelters here in the city. It's a huge, huge need. Um, women and families and face incredible amounts of violence and sexual assault when they're on the streets. And I think one way to stop that is to put a roof over their head. David? <clears throat> um, this District 5 race mm -hmm. um, has uh, attracted uh, Seems All kinds of candidates. Of <laughs> uh, 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 greatness. Uh, um, and, and I'm just wondering uh, um, if you might, uh, uh, why do you, why now? That's a great question, and it's one, unsurprisingly, that I get a lot. Uh, you know, so I announced for the District 5 seat first, actually. Uh, and I decided way back in September that I wanted to run for this seat because I think that it's really important 
to have somebody with my community organizer background on the city council. As we move to this new districted election system, it really completely changes the way that our city can interact with our constituents. But in order for that to happen, we have to elect the right people. Uh, I am out in the community every day having tough conversations about tough issues, um, and I don't think that electing somebody who's going to answer letters from City Hall is enough. We have to elect people who have real community experience, and I think that's what I bring to the table. Great, we have time for a few more. Uh, Liz, Elizabeth, Sarah. So, um, now with development, we need greater development, density issue, people need to care. But one of the things that really is upsetting people, including myself, is the fact that buildings that are building have no character whatsoever. Mm -hmm. They're not attractive, they're huge. Yeah. What can we do to remedy that? I think that one of the things that I hear the most about when I'm out in the neighborhoods is that folks really want more time for public comment um, on any of the projects that are going on. Folks want more chances to make their voices heard around the projects that are, that are going up. Um, and so I would support lengthening the notice. Um, and then also in Lake City, we're seeing a lot of neighborhood activism around the urban design framework. Um, that is happening for Lake City. Lake City is an area with huge potential and that will likely see big development over the coming years. And I think that having that community engagement early to set those guidelines and set those frameworks is going to be really important to the development that's going to be going in the future. Liz and then Sarah. So, as a community organizer, um, what, what I've come to find is that there are, there's actually quite a breadth things that are titled or called community organizers. <laughs> Absolutely. And it doesn't mean the same thing all the time. So I'm wondering if you could describe for me what it is that you that you are currently doing as a community organizer and which skills you feel you best translate to city council. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so in my role at Planned Parenthood I do uh, a lot of things as most nonprofit employees do. Um, but first and foremost is I manage a group of about 80 volunteers who do all, all of our legislative, community outreach, and electoral work. Um, so I'm out in the community all the time talking to folks about reproductive rights, engaging them on the issue, and asking them to take action. Um, that makes up the probably 90% of my job. It's really making sure that folks have the opportunity to get involved on the issues that they care about. Um, I could get into nitty gritty about legislative stuff. I make a lot of phone calls. It's <laughs> one thing I'll say, I have had a lot of doors uh, for my job. And then one of these skills that I think uh, is really applicable is I feel like I have the ability to talk about policy in a way that really makes sense to people. Um, it has been my job to take kind of what we're working on legislatively or what we're working on in the ballot and really make that palatable and give some folks something to grab onto. Uh, so I think that's one skill that I'll take. Mm -hmm. Okay, Sarah. Uh, scales growth is actually in our public transportation infrastructure. Mm -hmm. So what's your vision for public transportation in Seattle? How do you think we should get there? Yeah. Well, um, as I mentioned, light rail is coming to Northgate. Really excited about that. Um, I'm also supporting a light rail station at 130th, which is in my district. Um, and I think that that creates a natural hub for us to create a bit more of a spoke and wheel effect for our bus service. Um, I'm sure that you folks know, I know by living in North Seattle, that getting east to west is pretty difficult to impossible. Uh, so there are a couple of ways that I would want to make sure that we are using our transit dollars most effectively. Um, and for me, those really come down to reality and equity. So making sure that the neighborhoods that need transit the most are getting them, and the communities that often need transit the most are getting the transit options that they need as well. Um, for example, Lake City is in my district um, and has a huge low income population and cannot get east to west to save our lives. Um, you can get downtown or you can get to the U district, um, but even getting as simply from Lake City to Ballard uh, is really not happening. <laughs> so making sure that our communities uh, are prioritized in that way. We have time for a few more questions. Um, yeah, Jim. Um, so uh, now that we've moved to at-large versus and district seats, it's going to be interesting to watch um, how we govern differently. And I wonder if you could speak to the ability to govern both for District 5, but also for the city at large, focusing on the different issues that face 
the Northeast sector and uh, maybe Sasia. I actually think that there are a lot of commonalities across districts in Seattle. We all need affordable housing, we all need real transportation options. Um, one of the other big issues that we see in North Seattle that you very much see in South Seattle or West Seattle uh, are, is the lack of basic infrastructure. Uh, so I really think that first and foremost we need to focus on our common ground. And then secondly, it's going to be really about building relationships and building coalitions uh, within the city council. Um, that's one area that I've done quite a bit of work on through all of my campaign and nonprofit work, is bringing folks together to make sure that we can make change real, that we can make it happen. Uh, so it's really going to come down to building relationships and also understanding that, you know, while we think our districts are incredibly unique and there are unique challenges for sure, there's also a lot of common ground um, and a lot of things that we can get done. Great. So I have one. We still have time for a couple more if people want to. So uh, okay. initiative one. I'm answering them really. Fast. Sure, yeah. <laughs> but give them very generous with our time for us to ask a lot of questions. Uh, so initiative 122 is on the is get, gathering signatures to be on the ballot. Yes. Uh, would uh, establish a public financing campaign for city elections. Um, have you uh, signed it, and uh, what's your position on it, and how do you think it would change city council elections? Well, I fully support um, honest elections and initiative 122. Uh, many of my peers in the nonprofit world are working on the initiative right now. Um, I have not seen them since they got the petitions printed, but I will sign it as soon as I see them. Uh, and I fully support it. I feel like that initiative is the exact kind of thing that would help somebody like me run. Um, I don't have a huge long list of folks who can write me $700 checks. But I can go knock on doors and I can ask every single voter for one or two or all of their democracy vouchers. And I think that it really lowers a huge, huge barrier to running for office. Districts was really the first step in making sure that we could have a diverse city council. And I think honest elections is the next step. Great. Time for a couple more. Adam? I'm just uh, hoping you could talk to us a little bit about your opinions about the port and show oil. Well, uh, to put it simply, I think Shell Oil has no place here in Seattle. <laughs> um, not going to sugarcoat it. Um, I do not believe that we should be allowing dr drilling rigs in our port, um, and I would stand firmly against that. Okay, Joseph. So we don't have a, a bunch of younger people on the city council, I would say. Yeah. Um, so. Do you have any youth-specific policies in mind that you would like to push if you were elected? So there are a couple of things, um, and I don't know that I would qualify them as only youth-specific, but first and foremost that comes to my mind is municipal, municipal broadband. I really think it's going to be young people that lead the charge on that as we move to this future where broadband and internet service is not a luxury, but it's a utility. Um, I grew up in the age in high school and college where I needed the internet to do my homework and kids younger and younger also need that same um, utility in order to make sure that they can get the education that they need. Uh, so I think that that is one uh, example. I also think that, uh, so I'm going to be really focusing a lot on things like wage equity and paid family leave as well. Um, I think it's young women who are really going to take up that charge. Um, I don't have a family yet but hope to one day. Um, and know that having paid family leave available will make that more possible for my husband and myself. So I have another one that we may have time for one more. So this is just a fun question. So uh, a week or so ago, the council appointed a ninth council member from eight finalists. <laughs> if you had been on the council, which of those eight would you have appointed? That is a great question. I've actually been thinking about this a little bit. I had somebody ask me the same question at the door the other day. She was not happy with the choice that they made. Um, I probably would have voted either for Noel Frame or Sharon Maeda. Um, I have known and worked with both of them and have great, huge respect for the work that they have done. Um, so my vote would have likely gone to one of those two. Can you say why? Well, Besides respect and <laughs> Yeah, well, like I said, I know them both. Um, Noel, I know a little bit better than Sharon. Uh, but Sharon has been an incredible leader on, in the labor movement and on civil rights for many, many years. Um, she has put in the hard work and I think would have been a really great choice for this seat. Uh, and like I said, I know Noelle really well. I know where her values lie and I know that her and I share a lot of similar values. 
Um, and that's always the kind of person that I want to see in an office. I want to see somebody who matches my values and who has the track record and who I know will put in the hard work. We have time for one more question, if anyone has one. <laughs> anybody? Anybody? We can just vamp with Janet dropping her <laughs> <laughs> Uh, so while I waited, we're now out of time, so if you want to end with a 30-second uh, closing. Great. Uh, well, I didn't really prepare a closing for you today, um, but if I leave you with just one thing, is that I understand that I am in a crowded field of some really good candidates. Um, I think that I'm the best person for the job, and I hope that you'll agree with me. Uh, we need more young people on the city council. The average age is somewhere around 60 right now. That's not an exact number, it's an estimation. Um, and I hope to pull that down. Um, I also think that I'm prepared and I'm ready. Um, and that I will do the hard work that it takes to win and to serve as a city council member. So thank you so much. Great, thank you. Thank you.